everybody. Happy Thursday, wherever you happen to be. Here we are on the eve of December, today being November 30th for our global travel update. I'm back here in New York. Of course, you know how to reach me on your questions, and we'll talk about that in a second, but I've got a lot of stuff to talk about. Uh, as you know, we've been broadcasting in Hawaii and Maui, covering their terrible ordeal, going back to August and the wildfires there. Uh, so much devastation in Lahaina. Basically, it's ground zero. Uh, I was at the location with the officials. Uh, that tour was, uh, I'll never forget it. But of course, the question becomes, uh, so many travelers are conflicted. Should they go? Is Hawaii open? Uh, the answer, of course, is they should go. And Hawaii is open and Maui is open. Just Lahaina is basically basically blocked off and no one's going there at all. And no one will be going there for quite some time. When I say quite some time, I'm talking about years. But there are ways you can help, whether you're going or not. Uh, there are so many different ways to help right now. There's so many different relief agencies with boots on the ground that are really, really doing the hard work there. Imagine a fire that was the deadliest fire in more than a century in the United States. In the whole United States. 100 people lost their lives. Over 7,200 people displaced lost their homes, 2,200 structures burned to the ground, melted. Uh, that's all the restaurants in Lahaina. That's 120 restaurants as well, gone. Uh, when you take a state like Hawaii, where the GDP is so dependent on travel and tourism, uh, you have to basically acknowledge that they desperately need our help. And part of that means we need to go. Now, that doesn't mean we're just going to go and sit at the pool and uh, put a pina colada up our nose. There are ways you can go and volunteer to help while you're there. And uh, that's how great lifelong relationships start when you're giving help without even being asked for it. The Hawaiians have a name for it, by the way. It's called kakua. That means to help without being asked to help. Uh, but I'm asking you to help. And so if you go to our website, petergreenberg.com, we'll list all the aid and relief organizations that are doing all that hard work. And that ranges from the American, the American Red Cross of Hawaii to the Maui Strong Fund, to Operation USA, the United Way of Maui. I mean, so many different folks are out there working, and they're going to be there for quite some time. The rebuilding effort is going to take years. And if you think that's two or three years, you're wrong. Probably eight. And I may even be low on that. But in the meantime, the recovery needs to happen now. And uh, they need you. So do what you can to help. And if you listen to our radio show this Saturday... Coming up day after tomorrow, you'll hear more with me and the governor of Hawaii, Dr. Josh Green, and many of the other folks out there who are helping to rebuild and moving forward in this terrible tragedy. Okay, a little update from the Thanksgiving holiday. Time for me to give a grade. Uh, believe it or not, this may surprise you. For the airlines, the airports, and the TSA, they get a strong B+. Who knew they could actually pull this off? The largest number of travelers in recent, in recent history. And guess what? The TSA processed all 2.9 million of them on Sunday. Uh, there were very few delays and cancellations, relatively speaking. The weather was relatively forgiving. So everything combined not to, not to create a perfect storm, but to mitigate what could have been misery. And we all got a chance to go back for our obligatory dysfunctional family get-together and then come back. So uh, congratulations to those folks at uh, those agencies for doing the right thing. They staffed up appropriately, they ramped up appropriately to meet the demand pushes that they knew they were coming. And it's, for that, they should be commended. Now they should do it every time. Let's hope they can. Uh, speaking of on-time performance, a little news about that. How do you know if your flight is on time? Who's gonna tell you that? Well, believe it or not, the airlines are required to publish that statistic about whatever flight you're booking, right? What's its historic on-time performance? Is it you know, chronically late or is it late only 2% of the time? You can find that information on the airline's own websites. You won't find that information on the online travel agencies, the Expedias, the Travelocities, the Orbitzes, et cetera, but you'll find that on the airline's own websites and you'll also find that at the U.S. Department of Transportation Office of Consumer Affairs website. And that'll give you an idea that if the flight you wanna book is late 78% of the time, you might not want to book it. Uh, but now how do they determine, what are the metrics that they're using to determine what constitutes an on-time flight? According to the DOT, it's any flight that arrives 
within 15 minutes of its published schedule. So now let's really do the numbers here. What they're telling you is, if your flight is 14 minutes late, it's still on time. Now let's add one other wrinkle to it. Let's say you're sitting in the back of the plane. It's going to take you 12 to 14 minutes to get off. Add that to the 14 minutes that you're late. You've just now lost nearly 30 minutes of connect time to get to your next flight. Now you know why I always tell you, what? Give yourself two and a half hours between connecting flights or you'll be spending the night in the rocking chairs at the Charlotte airport, okay? Also, here's another tactic that I'm going to suggest. A lot of people are doing it more than you know if they're doing connecting flights. Let's say you're taking a flight from New York to San Francisco with a stop in Chicago. Even if you give yourself two and a half hour connecting time, what some people are doing is they're booking a later connecting flight from Chicago to San Francisco as a full fare refundable ticket. So that if their flight is actually late, they've got it, they're protected on another flight. Because the problem that we've had all year long is that even if the airline wants to put you on a later connecting flight, it's already full and you're stuck. This way you're protected. God forbid your flight's actually on time in Chicago and you can connect to your other flight, you simply refund that other ticket. I'm just saying, a lot of people are doing that now and it seems to work. Okay. Now, one other thought about the Thanksgiving uh, travel period, it didn't stop bad actors. It didn't stop some really bad passenger behaviors. Some of you may have heard about it, like the Southwest Airlines flight, where when it was on the ground, a passenger opened the window emergency exit door, walked out on the wing and jumped to the ground. Uh, not good, because every, arm, every, every door of every plane, when it's on the ground, is armed. And it's armed to do what? deploy emergency slides and chutes, blow them out. Anytime an airline does that, that's about a $50,000 charge to rebook, reboot, and refit. And of course, that plane is then out of service for the rest of the day. Uh, not only that, the plane stops where it is because basically now you have a potential fire emergency. You have someone who's unauthorized on the ground. So you've got police, you've got fire, and now you have the FAA and the NTSB. Everybody gets in on the act, not to mention the airline's own people, and it disrupts everything. Well, that happened, right? Another thing that happened, you may have seen the video, it went viral in about two seconds. Why? Because every passenger now has a cell phone camera, and we're all citizen journalists, and we can't wait to capture this on, on tape. We record it digitally. What is it? The Frontier Airlines passenger, the woman who was told by the flight attendant she couldn't go to the bathroom, couldn't use the lavatory, and she got so incensed. Now, I wasn't there. I didn't see how it escalated. There could have been other contributing factors. However, what did she do? She basically stood in the middle of the aisle and said, okay, if I can't go to the bathroom, I'll go right here and takes off her pants. Now, I'm, I'm told with reasonable assurance she didn't do number one or number two. But the point is, people are getting crazier again. And it's not just the holidays. I've said it before. I'm going to say it again. 80% of these cases can be traced right back to what? Alcohol. People are getting tanked at airports and walking on the plane already intoxicated. So how do we fix that? No, we're not going to put breathalyzers at jetways. That's not going to work. We're not asking the flight attendants to become sky cops, although in many cases they don't have a choice. They have to do that. That's one of the reasons why every airplane today carries what? A number of Ziploc handcuffs. Because people have to be lashed to the seats when they start acting out. Here's another solution. I've said it. I'm going to say it again. Employ the NFL fourth quarter alcohol rule. What's that? Do it at the airport. No establishment can serve you, me, or anybody else alcohol within 45 minutes of the time printed on my boarding pass or your boarding pass. It'll make sense. Now, if the flights are delayed, people are going to get angry because they want to drink. That's exactly when they shouldn't be drinking. It's got to be based on that boarding time on the boarding pass. And if you do that rule, yes, it means less revenue for the concessionaires, but how much does it cost? to divert a plane? How many misconnected passengers? How many mis misconnected baggage? And how much misconnected crew? Not to mention fuel burn. It's a lose-lose situation. Let's make that rule happen, and at least we'll mitigate 80% of the problems overnight. Anyway, that's just a thought there. Now, I got to share with you <laughs> this wild story. It's been brewing for a while. You may have heard that some cruises offer promotional cruises to nowhere. How, do, how about a cruise that's never going anywhere? <laughs> Not even leaving the dock because the ship doesn't even exist. Well, 
there was a company called Life at Sea Cruises. And the concept of it was great, right? You invest X number of dollars, and you'll be living on that ship for three years. Okay, global nomads, get out your laptops, go to work. Well, a lot of people, saw, they booked about 111 cabins of people who did what? They gave up their homes, they sold their cars, they quit their jobs, and they said, great, I'm going to just cruise the world and hang out from here. One small problem, the cruise line did not have a ship. Whoops. The cruise was supposed to leave uh, 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 earlier this month, November 1. And then they got a note saying, okay, it was going to be delayed to November 11th. Then it was to be delayed till today, November 30th. Well, guess what? Last week, they finally had to come to grips and tell them the truth. Uh, we don't have a ship. And some of these people were already in Istanbul, which is the first port of departure, hanging out waiting for the ship. They were waiting for three weeks. How did they get their money back? Uh, this is going to be an interesting story. So the cruise to nowhere becomes the cruise to nowhere forever. And uh, I hope they enjoyed their intermediate stop in Istanbul without ever getting on the water. Uh, okay. Now, speaking of that, and I say this specifically to those people who were disenfranchised by that life at sea experience, I saw this posted the other day. I want to share it with you. It's in the spirit of Christmas. I think it's perfect. Anthony, put it up. <laughs> All right, that's it. I just had to share it. I thought it was funny. Uh, and there you have it. And finally, uh, before we get to your questions and, and a few other things, uh, I, uh, <laughs> this one's great. If you're like me, you describe airline food as an oxymoron. How many of you get on the plane because of the food, because of the cuisine? Uh, if anybody says yes, you come under the category of D for delusional, right? Every once in a while, you get a surprise meal that's actually pretty good. The simpler, the better, by the way. But more often than not, I'm not eating on the plane. Most people don't eat food on the plane because they're hungry. They eat food because they're bored. And somebody puts a tray in front of them on a long flight. And they're, well, okay, I got nothing better to do. I'll just consume all of this. And they do. And then they hate themselves for the next two days. Well, this one takes the cake. No pun intended. Uh, China Eastern Airlines uh, handed out this menu to their business class passengers. Look at it carefully. Can we zoom in on that? If we can, I'll tell you what it says. Lovely food there. They have all sorts of things. I'll read this to you. Oh, they have uh, smoked pepper beef, uh, vanilla shrimp, whatever that is, cucumbers, tomatoes, asparagus cream soup, blah, 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 blah. But look right above the other appetizer. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, imported dog food. <laughs> and don't tell me it tastes just like chicken. Anyway, uh, was this a typo or, or not? Uh, we've, we've reached out to China Eastern. We haven't heard back yet. But uh, another argument for BYO. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay. I remember the days of Alpo. All right. We'll move on. Anyway, I had to share that with you. And last but not least, before we get to your comments and questions, uh, what do you look for when you buy a bag? Obviously, looking for style and color. I hope durability, price, all those things, right? But what about the warranty? What about the warranty that comes with the bag? Well, guess what? Most luggage warranties suck. They're very clearly, uh, there's so many exclusions on that. There's so many uh, clauses that get them off the hook, right? Because it's a definition of wear and tear. You know, whose definition are you going by? Theirs. Uh, uh, there used to be bags that really had great warranties. Even Toomey had a great warranty, right? A lifetime warranty with some exceptions, but they'd fix everything, right? You know what their warranty now is? A heavily exclusioned five-year limited warranty. But I'm happy to report to you, we just did the story. I'm gonna, I'll give you the link. You can go to it for our show, The Travel Detective. We found two companies that truly have a legitimate, bona fide, lifetime, unlimited warranty against anything, right? One is uh, Briggs & Riley here in the U.S., and the other, made in Germany, these two bags, by the way, I swear by, Remova. And so if you take a look at the link that we're going to post right now, watch the show, 
We actually went to both locations. I took my crews to their manufacturing and design facilities and their repair facilities to see how much damage we do to our bags. And no matter what we do, they will still fix them free of charge. That is a bag I want. That's a bag you want. Um, and uh, take a look at that. I hope you enjoy the piece. Uh, especially the one from Remova, which <laughs> they got a bag back with certain markings on it that they found out later were the mouth of a crocodile. That's all I'm going to say. You got to watch it. All right. Now let's say hi to everybody. Here we go. Camilla saying hi from Tucson. Hello, Camilla. Colleen saying hello from sunny San Francisco. Lorena saying hello from Lansing, Michigan. Just came down from the ice leafy gutters to wish you and your ba B Bucky Badgers congratulations. Yeah, congrats. Let me explain. Our team still is not good. But because we had a winning season, barely, we're bowl eligible. I'm waiting to see which bowl we go to. Uh, last year, it was like a silly bowl. Uh, everything short, a little bit short of the tidy bowl. But in any case, remember, we have to come up with a better offensive playbook. We can't just say, let's run it up the middle and think we're going to go anywhere. All right, but thank you, Lorena, for your congratulations. Hello from Maui, from Sue. Thank you for being there. And uh, thank you for helping out, too. Uh, you, uh, go to our website again, petergreenberg.com, and you'll see how you can help all the people in Maui and how you can help yourself in the process by going there and also volunteering some of your vacation time to help in the much-needed recovery. All right. Gene is saying hi from a gloomy Tulsa, but we do love Tulsa. Tulsa is a, an unsung hero to me. If you go to the Travel Detective, you'll see the, you'll see the feature piece we did on the hidden gems of Tulsa. What a remarkable city. Great arco, art deco architecture. Of course, it's Route 66 come to life. And uh, a few other things that I'm going to save for when you watch that show. Go to Amazon Prime or check your PBS station for the Travel Detective show that has the hidden gems of Tulsa. Uh, all right. Uh, Colleen says, I can't believe Lahaina, Lahaina is gone and so much of my youth along with it. But the impact on all the locals, I can't even imagine the sorrow they are going through. I can tell you, having been there, uh, it's, um, it's tough. It's tough, but they all have hope. And if you know the big banyan tree in Lahaina, for those of you, how could you miss it? Uh, even though it was burned, as everything else was, it did not burn to the ground. And they're starting to see some new shoots coming out of it. It may still be saved, which wouldn't that be great? What a symbol. Jew is saying hi from Japan. Gina is saying hello from San Diego. Joan is saying, hey, sunny California. Okay. Gina is saying we are collecting guitars and nukes from San Diego area to bring to Maui and Lahaina Music. Shout out to Alaska Airlines for waving all the baggage fees for us. All right. You go, girl. I love that. And by the way, the wine and music festivals are still going on this year. The golf tournaments are still going to go on. The Maui Invitational, which was just recently played, was actually played in Hawaii because they're using the basketball court in Maui as a relief center. But things are still coming back, and they're getting done. Golf tournaments, music festivals, food and wine festivals in Kapalua happening. So another reason to go. Uh, all right. Hey, Terry saying hello from historic Route 66. I just mentioned Route 66 in terms of Tulsa. I know you're California. Uh, Priya saying, watching from Irvine, California. Hope you had a relaxing Thanksgiving. Well, Priya, let me tell you what I did. I'm not making this up. I watched as much bad football as I could, and I binge-watched all the stupid people on Wheel of Fortune. That's my guilty pleasure, as I watch somewhat compromised people looking for a vowel, when, of course, we've already solved the puzzle. I know I'm being elitist, but that's my guilty pleasure. Um, all right, Scott's saying, I'm sailing on the MSC Seashore on Sunday from Port Canaveral. Any thoughts on MSC? Yeah. Uh, you know, MSC is the largest shipping line in the world, and it's family-owned. And they decided many years ago that they wanted to get into the cruise industry, but do it in a very European way. So I can tell you that the one thing you're going to be astounded by on that ship, among other things, is their food. They really go out of their way on their cuisine choices and their restaurant options. You're going to enjoy it. Uh, okay. Here we go. Ah, Terry wants to know, any update on getting rid of those annoying resort fees? A travel conference I attended, the organizer got the $35 fee per night waived. Exactly. It's negotiable. I keep telling you guys this. Even in Las Vegas, where it says on your reservations form, mandatory resort fee, 
garbage. Remember, hotels do not make money when you stay once. They make money when you come back and tell all your friends. Why would you come back to be nickeled and dimed? So, you're going to start seeing uh, state attorneys general uh, launching cases against major and minor hotels for failure to disclose, uh, lack of transparency, and a few other things. And you're going to start seeing some settlements. What you have to watch out for is the definition of terms. You may get a settlement legally on resort fee, and the next thing you know, the hotel is charging you a hospitality fee. It has to be delineated in the settlement that they cannot charge any kind of fee without fully disclosing it up front and giving you the opportunity to dispute it. They have to justify their case, right? I remember going to San Juan uh, for the American Society of Travel Advisors Convention, staying at the Sheridan there. By the way, we name names here, so they're getting named. And when I checked in, they said, oh, here's your complimentary yoga class. I didn't want a complimentary yoga class, but it was all part of my resort fee that they didn't disclose. Aha. Uh -huh. So if I had gone to that yoga class, what would I have been doing? I would have been contemplating why the hell did I pay that resort fee as I was doing downward dog. So I went back to the hotel and I said, uh-uh, guys, not paying it. And they didn't hesitate to take it off. If you don't ask, you don't get. It would be better to do it before you make the reservation. I didn't know about it until I saw it, and I only saw it when they gave me this coupon for a stupid yoga class I was never going to take. And then upon further investigation, that was matched up against that stupid resort fee. So you know what you got to do. Okay. Ah, Patty says, resort fee of $35 waived at the Hyatt in San Antonio this week. It's happening. All right. Uh, all right. Here we go. Oh. Lorena says, when you talk about eating fresh fruit on the plane, are they letting you bring it on or are you buying at the airport? The fruit I've gotten in the airport tastes like it would be ripe in two weeks. No, you can bring fruit to the The TSA doesn't stop you from bringing fruit on the plane. I have grapes, blueberries, apple, a Bosque pear or two. Uh, exactly. And what's great about it is it hydrates you and it fills you up as opposed to the glop they might be serving you or charging you for and, and calling it an airline meal. OK, the only chance of the only uh, condition about that is if you're flying in or out of Hawaii, you can't bring fruit. Right. That's it. That's their State Department of Agriculture. And they're very strict about that. Uh, OK, April says, I didn't even look at the warranty. I factor that if the luggage breaks, I'll have to buy another bag. Well, April. I just told you what to do. Find a luggage company that gives you a truly unlimited warranty and you won't have to buy another bag. Now, there's a concept. By the way, my Briggs & Riley bags, I trash them because I travel more than most of you. And uh, I've got two going back in for repair in about a week. Now, what happened? I lost a zipper and a wheel. Most of you say, okay, throw the bag out. No, they repair it. It's a, it's a lifetime warranty, and I use it. Um, okay, Priya says, I'm keeping my Iceland land tour. Hopefully, volcano situation will calm down. When do you think I should look for a booking and flight ticket? From, from Chicago to Reykjavik. Well, you haven't told me when your land tour is. Tell me that, and I'll give you the answer. Uh, ah, Jeffrey Keith says, I backed over my Briggs & Riley roller, and they replaced it. Okay, there you go. My point in my point exactly. Uh, Roy says, hi, from New York. Uh, ah, Patty suggested dry fruit. Dried fruit as a place. Like, absolutely. Love it. Uh, okay. April says, hi from Vegas. Thank you for these informative weekly travel updates. Well, thank you, April. Now don't now listen to me on the bags. Um, all right. Okay, Big, Big Al saying hi from Sacramento. Jonah saying, is there any truth to the rumor we heard from a friend that Vegas is a great deal a few days before and after Christmas hotel rate cuts? That's not a rumor. That's true. There are two dead weeks in the United States. One is this week, right? The week after Thanksgiving when everybody's recovering from that family get-together. The second dead week is literally a few days after Christmas, just like two days, and starting on January 3rd for that next week. It'll be right before they have CES. Uh, th th those are dead weeks you can get in, and the rates drop precipitously. Uh, ah, Patty says, a cheese sandwich. Yeah, you can't go wrong with a cheese sandwich. Uh, okay. Oh, and she says, okay. Uh, Lorena says, how about taking fruit uh, in Amsterdam or uh, Nairobi? Yeah. You can do it. 
Okay. Uh, oh, Prius says, my Iceland tour starts July 1 of 2024. You are doing nothing about that now. You're not booking a single ticket. And I hope on the land tour, you only gave them a, dep a deposit and didn't have to pay in full because that's too far away. Uh, what you want to do is, is look at this again in March, right? About 60 days out. Okay. Um, Gene says, my, my son's luggage was lost on his return trip from Switzerland. Two weeks later, he actually received them. Well, there you go. Probably from a guy named Vern in an Econoline van at 2 o'clock in the morning, but at least you got him. You didn't name the airline. I'd be interested to know which airline that was. All right, let's go to the photo of the week. I love this photo. Now, I'm going to tell you where, it's, where it was taken because I've been where that place is. Anybody want to guess? Well, first of all, let's, let's congratulate Irene Shushuk, and she wrote, Last month, while sailing on the Nile River, I took this picture at sunset. We were docked in Luxor. You know what? My, one of my favorite things to do in Cairo is to go out and rent a felucca at around that time of the day. But before I rent the felucca, I go to a little restaurant that only the locals know about in Cairo called Paprika, and they make the most amazing food, which they'll then wrap in aluminum foil for you. It still stays hot. You get on the felucca, get your favorite drink, and off you go down the Nile for, uh, for sunset. And uh, most people will go take an organized tour, or they'll be on one of the big tour boats. No, you want to be on a boat that's even smaller than the one that, that uh, Irene took, and that's the experience you want to have. That was taken in Luxor, but you'll have a similar experience on the Nile in, in Cairo as well. So uh, there you have it. Now let's go to some of the questions you guys asked. And of course, if you think you've got a photo that qualifies as the photo of the week, you know the deal. Photo contest at petergreenberg.com. And if we agree with you, it goes on the show. We love it. Thank you, Irene. We like that it goes. Okay, some other questions you guys sent in. Uh, Debbie says, I had a friend that needs a passport, ASAP, and went to a hole in the wall place in Miami that says they will get it in two days and thinks they take a lot of the appointment spots ahead of time because there isn't a problem for no showing as is possible. It's not only possible, that's how these expediting services work. They literally hire people to stand in line. That's how they get it done. And you'll pay a premium for that. But if you need it right away, there you go. You pay the price. But these, these, these services do work. And the government does allow it because they're doing, they're doing the schlepping work for you. You're paying for the messenger, so to speak. Uh, Tim says, is there some place you haven't been yet? And the answer, Tim, is yes. There are 196 countries in the world. I've been to 152 of them. Who's counting? But I did. Uh, that's still 44 I haven't gotten to yet. And in all honesty, I don't think I'll ever get to the other 44 in total because the logistics of getting to some island nations requires you to give up about a month of your time. And, you know, there are not a lot of nonstop flights to Pitcairn Island, although I've been there. But you get the point. Uh, bottom line is... It's not a race. It's not the amazing race. I'm not checking a box off to say, oh, I did that just because I touched down and left. You want to immerse yourself and spend the, the, the proper amount of time there. So in terms of proper amount of time, that 152 qualifies. Uh, I know all these other guys setting records at Guinness Book who basically jump off the ship, touch the ground, take a picture of themselves, jump back on the ship. I'm sorry, that doesn't count. No. If you're going to say you've been someplace, you have to have really been there immerse yourself there, spend some time there, learn something. Huh? What a concept. And, uh, and exchanged conversations. So, but anyway, Tim, that's your answer. I still have 44 to go. Uh, Jamie says, when should I fly this year for Christmas? <laughs> well, I'm not laughing at you, Jamie. Uh, look, look, bottom line is how much time do you have? Because if you really want to get a great deal, you know, those deals expire or they, they evaporate on about the 15th of December and don't come back in until around the 4th of January. So if you can travel outside those windows, great. If you can't, then figure out another mode of transportation as, as opposed to airlines. If you can do that, either private car or even Amtrak. But if you want to do that, you better buy your ticket now because we're within 15 days of the December 15th cutoff. Uh, ah. Amy says, what's the best meal you've ever had on an airplane? We were just talking about airplane food. Well, it wasn't the imported dog food. The best meal I've ever had on a plane was the simplest meal. I'm, I'm dating myself now, but let's go back in time. There was a time 
on the Los Angeles to New York route, uh, United Airlines actually uh, on their DC-10s and on their 747s, and the front of the plane, there was a big, like a console in front of the first two first class seats. And on this console table, they put a humongous platter of food and they call it a deli gourmet flight. It was basically a deli from LA and a deli from New York, whatever you wanted, smoked salmon, cream cheese, bagels, pickles, whitefish, sturgeon. I mean, simple, right? And no heavy sauces, nothing cooked to smell up the plane. Simple, the best. And of course, because of that, it's no longer being flown. Uh, okay. Lorena says, if booking a ticket on Delta and then connecting to a, D a KLM flight, would the bag still be transferred? And the answer is yes, because Delta and KLM are part of the Sky team. They interline and they also code share. So your Delta flight is also a KLM flight and vice versa. There'll be no problem. Again, remember the two and a half hour rule I gave you. Uh, all right. Uh, Sardar says, when will we get more air traffic controllers? Well, I'll give you the technical answer is we just got them. The DOT has announced they've hired 1,600 new air traffic controllers, but that doesn't mean they're sitting at the consoles yet. They can't. This is not a learn while you earn program. Before you're allowed to sit at the console and work those flights, you've got to be an apprentice for like two years before they have the confidence to let you do that. So what is it now? 2023? We're about to go to 2024. We have three air traffic control centers right now that are below the 85% staffing threshold. That's critical. This is the one job you want nobody working overtime in. And uh, as a result, that's why the FAA asked airlines earlier this summer to t come back, you know, cut back 10% of their flights in the Northeast corridor. They couldn't handle the numbers. Well, they still can't handle the numbers. So bottom line is we got another two years to wait, assuming the airlines don't even add more flights. Think about that. Okay. Uh, Rob says, is it just me or does everyone now have pre-check? It seems like the line without pre-check is now shorter. Well, the line is shorter, but then you have to wait longer. Do what I do. Join Clear. Because Clear gets you to the front of the pre-check line. Da-da! How, how important is your time to you? Just about as important as it is to me. I'm a huge fan of Clear. It's not at every airport, and it's not at every airport check-in based on the airline. But if you're flying United and if you're flying Delta... At most airports, you got it. For whatever reason, I don't understand. American doesn't offer it at their checkpoints. So if you're flying in American at Delta in Dallas, you're just doing pre-check. But if you're in Orlando, Delta, bingo, clear. If you're in, at, at LaGuardia or JFK, Delta, you're in. United in Chicago, you're in. Do it. It's worth it. And many credit cards give you a statement credit on your clear membership. That means your cost of joining clear is zero. Check it out. Um, okay. Uh, I was looking at, oh, D says, I was looking at Tuesday's travel deals for Travel Tuesday, and the airlines didn't seem like they discounted, did they? They did very limited deals on Tuesday, but they're now doing deals today. Delta Airlines rolled out one last night with airfares as low as $114, and you could even do mileage redemptions. This is unheard of, considering what Delta's been doing in their frequent flyer program, but jump on it if you can. They've got some flights where it's only going to cost you 14,000 miles and about $12 in taxes. Now is the time to redeem your flights. So check out the Delta deals. These are pop-up sales. They're not going to be around for long, but in many cases, they're good until April of next year. But you got to jump on them this week. All right. Uh, did United start its new boarding process yet? If they did, it's news to me. Uh, but they're going to try it in certain markets. My guess is it's not going to work. And the reason is they already have nine different boarding groups, right? Look, think of the boarding group. If you're in boarding group nine, you, you have to be in the witness relocation program, right? If you're in boarding group eight, you've got to be a fugitive from justice. Boarding groups one, two, and three are either people on their meds or people not on their meds. And boarding group number three are people just acting out. And, oh, and boarding group number four are people acting like children. So this middle to the, this window to the aisle deal right? Window, middle aisle. I love the idea if you got rid of all the boarding groups, but because they didn't get rid of the boarding groups, I don't see where the time savings is going to kick in. I hope I'm wrong. I'll let you know. How about that? All right, let's scroll down a few more here. See what everybody has to say. Hello, Scott. Thank you for that. Uh, hello from Alabama to Katrina. Uh, ah, 
Listen to this from Gene says, my son is an air traffic controller. There is a lot of overtime going on. That's wrong. I mean, seriously, this is a critical, sensitive job. I don't want anybody working overtime. I want somebody for eight hours to be on their toes, alert, focused. After eight hours, forget it. I couldn't do that job after eight hours. And I think I'm reasonably alert. Uh, Gene, I'd love to hear what your son has to say about working overtime. If he's confident in the idea of overtime, forgetting the money he's getting, is he really confident that that's really solving the problem or creating a different problem? Uh, okay, Scott wants to know if I'll be at the Chicago Travel and Adventure Show in January. Scott, I won't be at that show. But if you check the Travel and Adventure Show's website, you'll see that I'm at every other show. Uh, I'll be in Denver on the 19th of January, and, uh, actually the 20th of January. Uh, I'll be in New York. I'll be in, um, I'll be in uh, Atlanta. I'll be in Phoenix. I'll be in Dallas. I'll be in San Francisco. Uh, I'll be in Washington, D.C. So please come out and see me. If you go to TravelAndAdventureShows.com, you'll see where I'm speaking. And I'm bringing in some very interesting panelists this year to join me on the Sunday of those shows. So I'll speak on Saturday, and then I'll moderate a special panel on Sunday at each of those shows. So please come and see me then. I really appreciate that. Uh, okay, let me just double check one more thing. Oh, Joan says, I love this question, Joan. Why don't they board the plane from the rear to the front? So much quicker, I think. You're right. But here's the real problem. Two problems, actually. Number one, we live in a world of entitlement. People want to board first based on their status. In first class, they want to board first for reasons I never understand. You should be boarding last in first class, right? But that's what they want to do. But there's the second problem. The overhead storage compartments cannot handle all the carry-on bags. And so people want to go based on their status so they have space for their bags. They don't care where they're sitting. They care where their bags are going to be. That's our problem. The way pla Because they've added so many more seats to most planes, no plane. Did you hear me? No plane can accommodate enough carry-on bags that the passengers bring on. I'm not saying people are bringing on five carry-on bags. I'm talking about your carry-on bag and your personal item. There's not enough space. That's why you see airlines gate-checking everybody and pissing everybody else off who paid to, to check their bags to begin with. It's crazy. But look, you're right. It would be so much quicker, but that's not going to happen based on the configuration of the planes. All right, a couple of housekeeping notes. Again, please take a look at the, at, the, at the link that Anthony posted on luggage and warranties. I think you'll find it fascinating. Of course, please listen to our travel show, Eye on Travel, on CBS this Saturday from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Easter, Eastern Time. If you can't find the show in your city, not a problem. We stream it live. So go, go right to our website, petergreenberg.com, at about 10.05 a.m. Eastern Time when all the other stations come back after their news and weather and we start the show. So I hope you'll join us. We'll be in Maui at the Ritz-Carlton Kapalua talking to everybody from the governor to a lot of people who have really interesting things to say that echo what the governor is saying as well. So I hope, I hope you'll join me then. In the meantime, uh, happy December, folks, because it starts tomorrow, and uh, we will talk to you very soon. Anthony, thanks for all your help today. And again, travel safely. We'll see you next week.